Big fight card this weekend from the Copper Box in Stratford. Uh, Joe Joyce versus Zhili Zhang, the big heavyweights collide. Uh, Co-main event's a good one as well. Former unified super featherweight champ Michaela Maya back in the UK. She takes on former champion at 140 pounds, Christina Linadatu. Michaela joins us now. Michaela, nice that you're back in the UK as well. I didn't expect you to be back so soon, but it is good to have you back home. I'm calling it, I'm calling it my home. I expected it. I knew I was going to come back to the UK. I had put so much work into promoting the last fight and in that process, I feel like I built a lot of fans here and I just, I wanted to continue that momentum and get back out here as soon as possible. Is there, like, can you take anything from the fact, although it was a defeat, the record books say it was a defeat, but because it was such a big fight card, you versus Alicia, uh, Clarissa versus Savannah, sold out the O2 arena. Can you take some solace in the fact that, you know what? the girls put on a good show regardless of the outcome. Yeah, uh, you know, that was a huge fight. Huge fight for my career. It was a huge fight for women's boxing. It was a huge win for women's boxing regardless um, of who got their hand raised. Like that, you know, twenty selling out 20,000 seats at the O2 Arena, 2 million views on TV. I mean, it was amazing. So uh, that's what I've always... I think that's what we all want for this sport. Uh, we want to continue to put on big shows like that and prove that we can we can sell out big cards and that we can hold our own. Okay, how long did it take to get over the loss to Alicia? Because the build up was, I mean, it, it got nasty at times. I think it's fair to say you guys said your words. It, it continued after the fight as well. I still see the odd WhatsApp and sorry, what tweet and Instagram from both of you. Are you over it? Is it something that you need to get back? Do you need to run that fight back? Is it a case of an itch that you have to scratch? Well, I made it very clear that I wanted a rematch. You know, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to see how lucrative a rematch between me and Baumgartner would be. To me, she's just being a dumbass. Like the, the, the businesswoman to me is like, hell yeah, let's give the fans a rematch. I know we didn't have a rematch clause and that's my bad. I plan on moving up after this fight, so you know, the rematch clause wasn't in my head, but back in the day, you didn't need a rematch clause. If the fight, if the fans wanted the fight, it was worthy of a rematch and the money was there, which ding, 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 all three of them were there, then you had a rematch. You know, that's what, that's what they did. They're gangster back in the day. They just did it. So I don't know what the problem is, but at the end of the day, I'm not going to sit around and wait for her. Um, I, she's not the only big fight for me. I moved up. Uh, it did take a while to get past, obviously, like, that's gonna hurt. Who wouldn't hurt? It would if it didn't hurt me. Then you should be concerned. But like, I'm I moved past it now. I have goals, and you know, it's no, I'm no, I'm no stranger to perseverance and ups and downs. Like, this is boxing, so um, I'm back, feeling like my old self again, and I have new goals. And she, I don't know. What do you want me to say? She, someone ask her. Everyone keeps asking me about the rematch. Ask her. It's not, you know, when you work that hard to get all the belts, she has all the belts. The ball's in her court now. I can't, she's got to want the fight. And I don't I'll think she honest, does. I'll, I'll be honest, Mikhail, I'm more interested in how you made 130 because if you're walking around at 150 and I've seen you up close, there ain't much of you at 150. So I don't know how you made 130, to be honest. I think you've got some special tips in there for everybody listening. Uh, it takes a lot of discipline, yeah. A lot of discipline. I have the best nutrition team, uh, perfecting athletes. They've taught me a ton over the years. I've been with them for four years now, so I couldn't do it without them for one, but uh, it takes a lot of knowledge, which I still think the fight world is learning a lot about how to yeah. properly cut weight. Um, I feel like I've mastered it and a lot of discipline and sacrifice, but I'm, I'm not skipping meals. I'm fully, I'm staying fully hydrated. I don't cut the water until the very, very last day. And uh, yeah, it's just what you eat, you know? So do you still believe you could actually do 130 safely? Uh, I could if I wanted to, but I don't want to. I'd be doing myself a disservice by going back down to 130. It's time, it's past the time, but it's time now for me to really let let my body fill out, let my muscles fill out, um, and see what I can do. You know, I, I really don't want to hold myself back or do myself any disservice by, by cutting down to 130 when I don't have to, you guys. I'm taller than all my opponents, I'm, I'm big. So I need to go challenge myself and move up now. Maybe okay. we'll meet along the lines, but you know, if not, she missed the bus, it's not my fault. I do get it because there's nothing worse than going into camp and camp is about making weight and not improving as a fighter. It's always better to go into camp and you're working on boxing technique and, and a game plan instead of how to cut weight and, and things to do to make to lose the weight. It's, it's horrible. It's really, really tough. So I fully agree with you. Yeah, and I 
I just want to be able to fuel my hard work. I know how hard I train and I want to be able to, to fuel that properly and see where that takes me, see what see what level I get to with that. And it's time for me to do that. And there's plenty of big fights for me. Baumgartner's not the only one. So if she wants to dismiss the rematch, that's on her. You're going from one big fight and I know this will be a little bit smaller, Michaela, but do you feel that this fight brings danger to it? Or what do you feel is going into it? Um... So I didn't want any easy fights and we're not going to get one with Lenardi too. And that's not what I wanted. I really wanted to continue to test myself and challenge myself and show the world that I'm still the best. I still believe I'm the best. And I'm not going to make anyone a believer of that by fighting chumps and easy fights. So I've never been about that. I'm not going to start now. And Lenardi is a great test. She's only been defeated by Delphine Pursoon and Katie Taylor. So I want to go in there and prove that I'm still great. That you are. We, we know you are. You don't have to prove that to anyone. <laughs> this fight though is 135 pounds. Is it a case of 130 was getting too tight to make or you look at, at maybe an easier route to the belts at 135? Look, you and Alicia, I know you guys have been going back and forth, but that's going to be difficult to make. Do you maybe look at Katie Taylor versus Chantel and think, I can get the winner of that? Is that why you've gone to 135? I've gone to 135 because that was always the plan. I always planned on moving up to 135, 140, 147. I know that I have the height and the skill to fight in multiple divisions. That's always been the plan. I should have done it a couple years ago. That was the plan also, but I had a goal. I had a goal of going and undisputed, and I wanted to see that through. So. I was always going to go up after this Alicia fight and or after I went undisputed at 130. That was the plan. Um, so, yeah, I'm doing what I always intended to do a little bit later than than I expected. But I'm feeling really good. You know, I it's the, I'm finally able to really reap the benefits of my hard work because I, I train really hard. The lifting, the sparring, the bag work, I mean, for a really a really long camp and I feel like with making 130 I didn't really get to fuel myself properly for all that work mm. I was doing in a sense that I really couldn't build strength I couldn't put on muscle and really let my muscles fill out and feel feel what my real strength felt like so um, this is the first time that I really feel like I'm fueling myself properly for all the hard work that I do and I feel really good I'm excited about the challenges at 135 you know I'm, I'm excited again I'm not I'm not in a bad place like obviously I went through it the competitor in me it hurt um, but I I'm over it now I'm good I have new goals this new division excites me and winning this fight will make me mandatory for Katie Taylor so that's my goal now so she's the ultimate goal Michaela, what is it? If Katie Taylor beats Chantel Cameron, I can imagine that Katie Taylor is probably going to sail off into the sunset. I mean, I couldn't see many more challenges out there for She will have gone up in weight and unified two separate divisions. If she does unify, if she does vacate the belts and they're gone, do you have anyone who's a specific target? I obviously know that you and Alicia have got massive... <laughs> I don't know what to call it besides a rivalry together, but you've got a big, big history. But outside of that, is there anyone else you look at? Would you go and travel if Chantal Cameron's still around? I mean, where, where do you want to go if Katie's not available? Yeah, first of all, I think that regardless of what, whether Katie defeats Chantal Cameron or not, she's going to come back down and defend her belts at 135. I don't think that she's ready to hang it up just yet, and I hope not because I've always... I've always dreamed of, of a fight against Katie Taylor. I think it'd be great. And obviously everyone, everybody wants to challenge themselves against Katie Taylor. I'm no different. Um, so I do think she'll come back down and defend her belts at 135. But if not, uh, I'd be happy to go challenge Chantel Cameron as well. I think that would be a, a great fight too. And like I said before, I'm not stopping at 135. You know, I, I walk around in my 50s. So I know that I can... I can go to multiple weight classes and challenge wherever the fights are. I think that's what's great about women's boxing right now is we're going yeah. where the fights are. We're going where the fans want us and um, where we can make the biggest fights possible. So I'm no different. I'm ready to do that. So does your yeah. mind right to think in your cut starts at 150? So you walk around at 150, maybe 160? No, I walk around about 153. Okay. So you're going to yeah. do 147, 154, no problem at all. I could, yeah, you know, I could. I'm, at this point, I, I got to keep my weight down. I, I just have a naturally skinny frame. You know, I don't have a big bottom half. I got long, skinny legs. I always have. It runs in the family. Um, but I, I need to keep this tinier frame if I want to, you know, 
challenge the champion at 135 and defend my and have have a career at 135 first which i really do but again i'll go where the fights are i'll go where the big fights are because that's what i want what do you make of linda daltu like i i a massive fan of hers look she beat yeah. alicia Gardner that you mentioned the fights against bassoon and katie taylor tough fight she gave katie taylor all she could have at 140 yeah. but she had time off she's had a baby she's come back just the one win and that was a six rounder where do you think she is right now um, I know she's coming off having a baby, but honestly, I don't put that past her. I don't put, I don't see that as like a negative thing. These women are coming, they're popping out kids and they're coming back with that mom strength. I'm serious. Like you've seen them <laughs> time and time again. They are, they're not, they're, they're not skipping a beat. And now, now they're even more with it because they have something to fight for. So I'm not putting that past her at all or making her thinking that that's going to make her any less of a fighter. Um, I just know that she's tough and aggressive and she's going to come forward and she has nothing to lose. So a win against me will also put her in line for for a world title fight. She knows that. Final point, um, obviously, look, the second fight back in the UK, the growth of the sport's crazy, right? I mean, again, you were part of something special alongside Clarissa and Savannah and we saw what Katie Taylor and Amanda did in New York mm -hmm. a few months earlier. Uh, are you surprised how quick this sport is growing? Especially yourself. I mean, you've been a fighter for as long as as long as many, right? As an amateur as well. Are you surprised yeah. at how quick the side of it is growing? Um, yes and no, because I feel like I've always believed, I've always had to believe that it would get to this point that we could be at this level. Um, but, you know, because it takes so long and so much work and there's so much it's you work so hard you think that's the time that's the time when it's gonna take off and then it does and it's like you start to lose maybe sight of of what that looks like and so um but over this last year it's just really it's been insane like women have shown that we can we can sell big cards we can sell out and we can entertain just as well as the men so am i surprised no but am i am i excited about it am i finally realizing wow it's here yeah um and we just gotta keep that momentum going. I still think there's a lot of work to be done. Like I hate to see that uh, Ginny Fuchs, 2020 Olympian, O'Shea Jones, 2020 yeah. Olympic bronze medalist, they still can't get fights. They can't get promo promotional support and they can't get fights. And that is so sad. So that just shows me that even though we've come a long way and we're making like, we're making a lot of improvements here, we still got a long way to go. There's no way you should have Olympians coming out of this past Olympics with no fights and no support. Yeah, it's crazy. But honestly, look, good luck Saturday. I will be there in the copper box. Um, I'm going to be neutral here. I like you. I like Christina as well. I'm just watching it as a fan. Should be a, a fantastic fight. And hopefully, oh no, more you're big in fights white. in the summer. You're in white. You're wearing my fight color. So you're pretty much <laughs> all in white. Pretty, what are you doing? We didn't know this. <laughs> All in <laughs> white. Well, good luck, Michaela. Honestly, good luck. Hopefully you too. You're team Michaela. You guys are both team Michaela. <laughs> good luck, Michaela. Good All right. Luck. Thanks, guys.